Hello everyone and welcome to the service of the Midpoint Ministry Center of the Chicago Church of Christ. I'm Clint Lahr, this is my wife Christy, and we want to welcome you from wherever you may be joining us from. You know, Jesus told his disciples to love each other the way he loves us, and that if we do that, then the whole world will know that we are his disciples. And now more than ever, we're seeing how our connections, our love for one another, can be a light to the world through online communication. So we're going to take a moment today to highlight some of the ways our global fellowship is staying connected and in touch and how you can be a part of that. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to show a short video uh, that shows how we're using different resources to stay connected. Hey family, I'm Zach Fazio with the Kidogo YouTube channel. May 3rd is Global Communications Day for the International Churches of Christ. We want disciples to know where they can go online to find information and resources for our churches. So please, share this video with your church to help your members stay informed. First, there's DisciplesToday.org, the official website for the ICOC. Disciples Today is a portal to find all kinds of resources made for disciples. For example, click the resources section to find downloadable podcasts, Bible talks, Christian professional workshops, and an app that contains all of our Bible study series. There's also hundreds of inspiring articles about churches, conferences, and service projects. The fastest way to stay informed is to sign up for their free monthly newsletter. Disciples Today is also home to the ICOC Church Locator, where you can find contact information on hundreds of ICOC churches worldwide. There's also DT Heart and Soul, a matchmaking platform like Tinder or eHarmony that hosts men and women from our family of churches. Finally, Disciples Today wants to hear from you. Please fill out their survey so they can know what your communication needs are in all the different parts of the world. Next, there's the Kidogo YouTube channel. That's us. We make Christian videos. Find our channel by searching for Kidogo, K-E-Y-D-O-G-O. The videos feature inspiring stories, testimonies, and updates about upcoming events. We also have a series of videos that explain biblical doctrines and controversial issues. We also just uploaded our feature-length movie, Finding Guy. It's a documentary about a gay man who found Jesus and then started a worldwide movement to bridge the gap between the LGBT community and the church. The movie has received standing ovations from people all around the world. You can watch all three parts of the movie right here on YouTube. And please click the subscribe button so you can be notified when we make new videos. We're getting closer and closer to reaching 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for taking a moment to let us talk about global communication. We praise God for how he continues to bless our family of churches and keep us unified. God bless. We are so grateful that our churches have built this communication network through the years. You know, it's so amazing that you can go worship with different churches from all around the world, that we can stay connected to each other, that we can hear good news from uh, churches near and churches far away. So please make sure you subscribe to Disciples Today um, and to Ki Kidogo uh, to make sure that you can stay connected with our global fellowship. You know, it's so cool that even today in, in our worship, we're going to be able to hear from different worship teams um, from our churches uh, in, across the world. So staying connected to each other in that way. We want to highlight quickly some of the uh, different ways that the ICOC Fellowship works and how we fit into it all. You know, the International Churches of Christ is comprised of 711 churches in 150 countries. We have uh, a Sunday attendance of around 131,000 with 90 new churches added since 2014. 40% uh, of the ICOC churches are in the U.S. and 60% of them are outside of the United States. And we're comprised of 33 families of churches. You know, we are very grateful for our Midwest family of mm -hmm. churches. We have 19 churches in our Midwest family uh, with just about 4,900 in our average Sunday attendance. We've added four new churches since 2011 and have seen just over 2,800 baptisms from the last 10 years. 
and we'll be adding a new church to our Midwest family of churches later this year, but we'll talk about, more about that later in the service. Uh, the Chicago Church of Christ, as most of you are aware of, is uh, the church we are a part of, and you can stay connected with what's happening in the Chicago Church of Christ on our website, chicagochurch.org, our, our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Chicago Church. The Chicago Church has an Instagram account uh, and also a YouTube page. Uh, for those of you who are part of Midpoint, you're watching right now on either Facebook or YouTube, so you know that you can stay uh, connected and seeing what's going on through those outlets as well. But, you know, we're just so grateful to be a part of a global, worldwide fellowship, and we're grateful to God for giving us all the tools that he has for us to be able to stay connected, especially during this time where we really can't connect in the ways that we are used to. So I want to thank everyone uh, throughout the ICOC Fellowship and in the Midpoint who helps us stay connected and especially taking care of the technological side of things so that we can use these tools to continue to stay connected, to show love for one another, and let the, our, our light shine uh, in this world. So uh, again, if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter for Disciples Today or some of the Kidogo videos, we encourage you to do so so we can continue to see the way God is moving throughout the whole world. Glory be to Jesus, who in bitter pains poured for me the life blood from his sacred veins, grace and life eternal. In that blood I find, blessed be his compassion, infinitely kind. Abel's blood for vengeance pleaded to the sky. Jesus, for our pardon cries, oft as it is sprinkled on our guilty hearts, Satan in confusion, terror struck Depart, lift ye then your voices, swell the mighty flood, louder still and louder, praise the precious blood. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Morano Adeni, and it's such an honor to be able to share with you all in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is exactly what this time is, a time to remember. In Joshua chapter 4 and 5, there is a story of God miraculously splitting the Jordan River for the Israelites, his people, to be able to cross over to the land he had promised them. This was such an amazing event and God told them to, be, to, to take 12 stones from the Jordan as they were crossing and erect these 12 stones in this new land they were going to conquer. This was an act for them to be able to remember, uh, to be able to remind their kids in the future of how God miraculously worked in their lives. You know, after that, they celebrated the Passover which was another occasion of them remembering what, how God had saved them from slavery in Egypt. 
I believe this act of remembrance were necessary because the Israelites had a tough, tough journey ahead of them. They needed to be reminded that they serve an awesome God, a God that saves, a God that continues to save so that they would continue to place their trust in him. You know, family, just like the Israelites, we don't know what is ahead of us. We don't know what is ahead of Corona. We don't know when this is going to end. But what we do know is that God brought them victory. And we do know, we have confidence that God has also brought us victory from slavery of sin through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, communion is a time for us to reflect and remember what Jesus has done for us and what he continues to do for us. If I think of myself growing up in Nigeria, a country that's so religious, but it took God taking me thousands of miles away from home to another country to be able to find him, for him to find me, for him to put men in my life that taught me truly how to walk like Jesus. How far, at what lengths did Jesus go to be able to find you? This is a time to remember that. What did he go through to save you? I want to encourage you all to really reflect on that and write that down. For some of us, let's consider that God might be slowing down the whole world just for us to be able to understand that he's not far from us. You know, Romans 5 verse 6 says, At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. This is a time to remember Jesus' ultimate sacrifice on the cross. A time to remember that he was flogged. He, was, he, he, was, he bled and he died for us so we can live and live life to the full. So I want to implore all of us as we drink the wine and take the bread to never lose sight of that sacrifice, even as we go through times like these. You know, parents of younger kids and teens, this is a difficult, tough time. I don't have kids and I'm not a parent, but I've heard of these stories of how crazy it is to work and homeschool your kids. But what a great opportunity you have to be able to share with your kids the faithful stories, to share with them how God brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light, to share with us younger ones so that we would never forget, even in the hard, difficult times as a pandemic, that we have a God that saves and continues to save. Amen, family. Let's say a word of prayer as we remember our Lord's sacrifice on the cross. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for going through whatever lengths to be able to find us, to be able to reach out to us, and so that we can perhaps reach out for you. Thank you for stories in the Bible that we can relate to that remind us of your amazing faithfulness in our lives. God, I, I pray that we will continue to remember your goodness, to remember your faithfulness, to remember your love, to remember your mercies that are new every single morning. And I pray that we would be able to share these stories with one another so that we can continue to have our trust and put our faith in you because you are a God that saves and you are a God that continues to save. We love you so much. Thank you for this time to remember your son Jesus on the cross. And it's in his name that we pray, amen. Thank you.
Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired. I Thank you, Maranu, for leading our thoughts in communion and helping us do the simple task of just remembering what Jesus has done for us. Yeah, I wanted to say a special thanks to Matt and Julie Brumley for that beautiful song mm -hmm. uh, to just help focus our hearts on God and the cross. You know, a lot of us uh, were here when the older Brumleys were a part of the Chicago church, and uh, Matt is their son, and I have a special connection to Matt and Julie because they were my team leaders in Colorado. And it's just cool to see, again, this, this global relationships and these friendships that we, we get to bond with um, through the years. So thank you. At this time, we're going to watch a video uh, from Jay Anderson to help prepare our hearts and thoughts for our contribution. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Anderson, and I'm honored to serve on the board of directors of the Chicago Church. I've been asked today to provide a brief update on the financial health of the church as we navigate this COVID-19 pandemic. As we look across these last couple of months, we have seen a reduction in our contribution, which is to be expected. But we've also seen very resilient giving across Chicagoland, and we've seen an incredible response by our staff. They have found unique ways to reduce their expenses in their discretionary accounts, in our meeting fees, and our facility fees. So at the end of the day, when we forecast out our performance through the end of the year. We are confident in our ongoing financial health. So thank you all um, for your great work and your sacrificial hearts. At the beginning of this pandemic, we started a COVID-19 benevolence fund. 
And as you always do, you respond in an incredible way. And we are so pleased to be able to support our brothers and sisters who are enduring incredible hardship as a result of this pandemic. Thank you all so very much for participating. Additionally, we've seen a 47% increase in the number of disciples participating in uh, our online giving program. This is incredibly helpful to our staff. It's really difficult to manage contribution when we no longer meet together on Sundays. And so that shift to online giving um, has really benefited uh, our staff and their ability to manage the contribution. So thank you all so much. What can we all do going forward? Let's continue to pray for our leaders, give them great wisdom as we um, experience church in these new and these different ways. Number two, um, please stay committed to your contribution. Be wise. Make sure you're giving, um, giving what you can. And if you're able to switch to online giving, um, we so appreciate that. And then lastly, um, please continue to pray and serve one another. With that, we will all get through this and find out what worship's going to be like for the rest of the year. Thank you all and God bless. Hello Midwest Churches, Jaren and Bianca Singh here with an update on the Kalamazoo church planting. We're still going, planning on touching down in August and our inaugural service will be September 20th. So ideally we'd be able to talk to you face to face, but this will have to do for now. As of May 13th, there are seven individuals from Midwest churches who've committing to come along with us on this church planting. We wanna call any thriving disciple to consider coming along. If you're someone who's looking for adventure, for something new, for late night Bible studies and early morning quiet times, for best friends and barbecues, we would love for you to consider joining us on this team. Kalamazoo is a storied city, meshing small town feel with different events and happenings of a larger city. It's home to the Western Michigan University Broncos and over 150 different majors. It's less than two and a half hours from both Chicago and Detroit. It's only 45 minutes from the church in Grand Rapids and a little over an hour from the church in Lansing. In so many ways, this is the ideal church planting location. They have a bunch of cool coffee shops and the best donuts in the Midwest. On top of that, there's a Kalamazoo Promise grant for young families that guarantee free college tuition if you go through the Kalamazoo school system. We realize that in this time, perhaps a church planting is the last thing on any of our minds, but I, I have to believe that at least for some, God is right now calling you to join us on the planting. I, I wanna make a special plea for everybody to take some time, even in the next 24 hours upon watching this video and really call out to God to see if this is something that the spirit is moving you to do, to stretch your faith in this way, to be a servant in this way, to be somebody who is a giver in this way. And this is going to be a community church. And certainly there will be a campus ministry, but we're calling anybody who's, if you're a single or if you're an empty nester couple, or if you're a young family or anyone in between that, please consider coming along on this journey. We are going to have an open house question and answer presentation session this upcoming Saturday, May 23rd at 10 a.m. Central Time. It's going to be on Zoom, but what you'll want to do if you want to get connected to that, please go to kalamazoo.church and fill out your information on the Get Connected tab. And then from there, we'll send you the Zoom link. That's gonna be May 23rd at 10 a.m. Central Time. We are so grateful for the continued support of the Midwest Mission Alliance. Please keep the city of Kalamazoo in your prayers, keep the mission team in your prayers and keep this upcoming church planting in your prayers as well. Thank you so much, family. Look forward to hearing and seeing some of you May 23rd at 10 a.m. We know a lot of people have been joining our services and participating with us who aren't necessarily part of the church and they're just kind of finding us online or have been reached out to by a friend or family member. And uh, we want to extend a special invitation if that applies to you. One, we're so grateful you've been able to join us. And, uh, and so if you want to learn more about the church, uh, who we are, what we're about, if you want to personally grow in your own walk with God, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at midpoint at chicagochurch.org. 
Uh, we would love to hear from you, and we'd love to connect with you. Yeah, and I just wanted to make special mention uh, for those of you that have young kids, you know, elementary school age, that may be bored watching this whole long service, um, we do have a special kids class that's on our YouTube channel that Patsy Harris put together, um, which is it's a great time for the kids to be able to watch something and to be able to kind of grow in their faith as well. We're hoping to be able to provide more of those, but just to make you aware that you can go to our YouTube uh, page to, to find that. So to, to go along with our whole uh, global theme we've got going for today's service, our sermon, our lesson today is going to be from Sean Wooten. And I know many of you have heard Sean Wooten. He's a, a, a beloved uh, speaker. And uh, he, as if you don't know him, he is um, absolutely critical in the missions work that we uh, help support throughout Eastern Europe. And so it's a real treat for us to be able to hear him today. And um, I, I want to I wanna encourage you uh, that if he says something that convicts you, uh, hits you, really encourages you, whatever, to, to, to type that out in the comment section. Share that with everyone. Give it an amen. Give it a shout out or whatever. Uh, we can be participating in the sermon in that way in the comment section. But without further ado... Uh, let's go ahead and hear from Sean as we continue our service today. Good morning, Chicago. Uh, great to be with the Midpoint region today. Um, I love visiting you. Thank you, Clint, for the invitation. And uh, usually getting to speak to you involves lots of very warm hugs and amazing hospi hospitality. It also involves a lot of jet lag, um, and it also usually, sometimes, if I'm lucky, involves some really good Chicago pizza. <laughs> but I think the pizza is going to have to hold, and I'm feeling the hugs virtually. Um, love all of you, so many of you that are dear friends, and um, it's just great to be a global family today. I'm sitting on my balcony in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, it's a beautiful spring day. Um, thank God the fires around Chernobyl have gone out. And uh, the air is much cleaner, so we can go outside. Um, but just a little bit, because everyone's quarantined. No one, not allowed to meet in groups of more than two. Uh, so we're trying to be safe. We're obeying our leaders and um, praying that God will resolve this soon uh, so that life can go back uh, to the way it was. Um, but just a couple hot items from Eastern Europe, some good news uh, things. Uh, two conversions, one in Budapest, one in Bucharest this last week. Uh, we've had six people become Christians in Odessa. All of this was happening while we were quarantined. Um, awesome brothers and sisters in their masks going into the Black Sea to get baptized or to baptize somebody. Uh, it's just inspiring. I've heard incredible news from your part of the world as well of how God's been working um, from AT. Um, so grateful for AT and Marcy. Uh, they're such dear friends. And Ed and Nancy are helping us to grow spiritually and training us at this hour. So we're very, very thankful for them. Um, so let's jump into the lesson. Oh, so you can check out um, my site uh, if you want to catch the monthly updates from Eastern Europe. And also, uh, we've started um, a month or so ago when this first started, I started a page on Facebook called uh, Prayers for Our Global Fellowship with COVID-19. And here we have a list uh, basically of everybody in our movement who wanted to be prayed for. Um, and every single day at 2 o'clock your time, 10 o'clock my time in the evening, um, we come online and uh, I choose somebody from around the world to join me, and they pray for all of our brothers and sisters, and we hear little news from their part of the world. If you can join this page, follow this page, but really most of all, pray for these people as our brothers and sisters have found themselves in great need of prayers at this hour to, uh, to be healed. So uh, those are kind of a bit of the updates, um, and there have been some incredible miracles. Uh, people have asked our disciples to pray for them, and they've gotten healed, and uh, many of them, uh, some of them have actually come out to church now uh, because they've gotten healed, and they're very thankful for the global prayers for them. Uh, so that's encouraging. But let's jump into the Bible, shall we? Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 is our verse for today. Um, love this verse. Uh, very encouraging and inspiring. Um, let's read together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, uh, let's break this into little pieces because I think God is going to really give us an incredible hug 
an encouragement this morning through this verse. First, it says here, praise be to. Um, let's talk about that just for a second. What does it mean to praise somebody? Basically, it's acknowledging that they've done something awesome or that they are awesome or they have a characteristic that's worthy of praise. Um, but you wouldn't do, this word doesn't involve like a personal uh, communication or praising or encouragement. So for instance, um, if Clint did something awesome yesterday and I call Clint and I say, Clint, you were awesome yesterday. I didn't praise Clint. I just encouraged him, I guess is what you would call it. Now, if I waited till today in front of all of you to say Clint did something awesome yesterday, then I'm now praising Clint because I'm, I'm, I'm declaring this in front of witnesses, a, a group, a cloud of people uh, who are getting to hear about Clint and what he's done. And that's what it means to praise God, right? I mean, we, we understand this idea. Uh, God is very thankful, and I'm sure he expects us to thank him in prayer one-on-one. -on -one. And if me and Clint go off to the forest and we decide to pray together and we thank God and we praise God, um, but the praise God is talking about here is that I would stand up in front of you, all of you, and say, God did this in my life. That's praising God. If I post on Facebook and 300 of my friends get to see something I believe about God, I'm now bringing him praise. And I think that is the call of the hour, uh, that we are getting the message out about how awesome our God and our Father is. Uh, you know, no matter what's going on in my life, if I stop to think about it, God has blessed me and is blessing me every minute with more than I can even ask for or imagine. Uh, the fact that I'm saved, the fact that all of my sins are forgiven is astounding. Um, the fact that he forgives me, uh, the fact that he didn't just didn't forgive me, that God actually ad uh, adopted me into his family, right? That I, that I can be a part of God's family, uh, that, that I have the church, that I have the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, you can go on and on if you just stopped, if you hit pause or, or if you just, you know, actually don't do that. But after the sermon, sit down with your family and say, hey, let's see how many things we can think of as a family that we're thankful for God for. And he's getting praised. Your children, your wife, your husband, everyone's hearing about how you view God and how awesome he is. This is important. This is important for our hearts. This is important for the world to understand who our God is. Because to be honest, it's very, very popular today to be negative. It's very popular to be critical. It's very popular to post negative stuff, repost negative stuff, repost anger, repost doubt, repost. It's not cool to give thanks. It's not fashionable to praise. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for the Christians to shine. Um, you know, there was a good example of this I wanted to share with you. Um, the, our sister who leads the church in Zagreb, Natasha, uh, she was awesome because, you know, she's homeschooling. She has two kids. So she went from being just minister leader to also homeschooling two uh, school age kids, which is very, very challenging, I'm sure. Um, and the Department of Education for Croatia is trying to provide resources for the parents to continue to educate their kids. And that could probably and most likely is, is very frustrating to get the resources you need. But Natasha, when she was feeling a little frustrated, she just decided to stop and pray. And she gave thanks to God for this woman who's in charge of education for the country. And then after she prayed, she went to the Instagram, the account of this woman, and just posted a little post about how thankful she is to this woman for her hard work, for her perseverance, for this unprecedented time, and just gave thanks for her and said she's praying for her. Um, this woman who has hundreds of thousands of followers responds to Natasha, starts to follow Natasha and started to chat with her. And now they're starting to build a friendship and, and Natasha is reaching out and sharing her faith with the Minister of Education of Croatia. Okay, so before the quarantine, how do you reach out to the Minister of Education for Croatia? It's almost impossible to get to some of these people, uh, but just Natasha's godly heart and godly reaction and her desire to give praise um, results now in a, in a woman learning more and more about Christ. So that's incredibly encouraging. Um, you know, also I wanted to take a moment just to give thanks and praise to uh, the European Mission Society and all the special missions that you've been sacrificing. You guys are amazing. Um, you've been sacrificing for years and years. I've been over here almost 28 years now, and I've been able to be here because of your guys' sacrifice and to do mission work over here. 
Um, but I'm also very excited about this coming summer because we're praying that the border will open and that we'll be able to enter Budapest, Hungary, but not just me and my wife, um, but six uh, brothers and sisters who've actually retired and are empty nesters. They've decided to uproot and spend their savings to come over and preach the word and help shepherd and strengthen the church of 90 brothers and sisters in Budapest. And not just those six retirees, but there's six campus ministers who've also decided to come over, take a break from their careers, quit their local jobs, uh, and move over to Budapest and help us build a campus ministry and help us build a youth ministry that just right now does not exist um, the way it can and should in Budapest. So that's amazing. And not just that. Now there's 12 other amazing, um, the, the movement, our, our fellowship calls them one-year challengers, but we call them globe changers. Because these 12 people, if they come all together um, with our six retired people and our six campus ministers, that's basically a group of 24 people with me and my wife and David and Nadia de los Santos, who I know you know from the Midwest. Um, we're all coming uh, to preach the word and help people to become Christians. I'm so proud of our globe changers. I really believe that if this group of almost 30 people land in Budapest, Hungary for a year, It'll change the vector of Christianity. It'll revive the faith that could lead to a church becoming a church of hundreds and even thousands and planting churches all over Hungary. It can get us to that critical mass uh, that would allow the nation to be reached for Christ. So I am so proud of this team to be willing to come and move, um, quit jobs, uh, stop their university, um, and all of them are raising money because they want to come over not to find jobs, not to find local careers, <laughs> but they're coming over just to be freed up seven days a week to help people become Christians. So they're doing GoFundMe and they're raising money and they're trying to find people who will support them on this epic adventure um, of radical evangelism. So um, you actually have three people coming from your part of the world, very proud of them. Uh, there's Carlos and Mackenzie and Jesse. Uh, Jesse's not from the Chicago church, she's I think Minnesota, <clears throat> but from the mid, <clears throat> sorry. From the Midwest family of churches, these three heroes are coming from the Midwest, so it'll be great to have a permanent piece of the Midwest uh, right next to me and Lena there in Budapest. But if you can support them, please support them. Pray for us. Pray for this team. Pray that God opens the borders. Pray that God opens the doors uh, that they can land. Um, praise that we can raise the money needed to go. Um, if you could uh, donate to uh, Carlos or McKenzie or help out with Jesse, anything you can do to help uh, send them our way. We would be so, so very thankful. Um, but be praying for us. And I am very proud of you, Carlos and Mackenzie and Jesse. Uh, you guys are my heroes and can't wait to have you with us uh, over here in Eastern Europe. So let's keep going a little bit further here. God and Father and Lord Jesus Christ. There are some, some names here that are just mind-boggling and inspiring. First of all, God, right? Oh my gosh, I mean, God created the universe. I mean, like the universe could like fit in the palm of his hand. Um, and he creates and understands where every atom and, and electron and there's nothing outside of his providence. God is amazing. I mean, we it's impossible to wrap our brains around God. Uh, he created everything, but he also created you. Um, you know, let's never forget when we pray, um, we, we also, as we're about to talk about, we call him Father, but he's a lot more than just a father. He is God Almighty. Um, and that's astounding, inspiring, a little scary. Um, but let, let our minds always be pushed out of the, the realm of reality when we talk about God. He can do anything. <clears throat> so then the second word here is father. So you have this huge, almighty, infinite. And then it boils down to the closest male relationship any child uh, would have a father, a dad, uh, acceptance, love. Um, you know, I've spent years working with orphans, um, and it's the, the the one thing they say over and over again, and they cry, and they, and they need hugs, and, and they say, I just wanted a mom and a dad. And, and you know, in life, uh, sometimes the dad doesn't quite work out to be the dad we kind of hoped he would be. I, I don't know what kind of dad you had or what kind of father you have, but I know what kind of father God is. And I know how much he wants to be with you. I know how much he's willing to pay and sacrifice to adopt you. Adoption's very expensive. Um, but this adoption was the most expensive adoption ever. 
and he just isn't offering you like a free list or a clean list. He's not just offering you a ticket into the concert or the museum. He's offering adoption. He just didn't give you a gift, a, a ticket or a gift to heaven that you can then end up there. He wants you to jump into his car and he's taking you there. You're going as a family. Um, he walks with us. He loves us. He's adopted us. He dreams for you. He dreams for me. Um, let's not forget how much God loves us. If you don't hear me say anything today, hear me say God loves you. God's adopted you. Um, then it says here, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> also, two incredibly um, inspiring pictures come from these words. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Christ, uh, Savior, Messiah, Savior. Um, you're in the middle of the ocean and there's no chance and the sharks are circling and he swoops in and takes you out. You're on the top of a burning building and there's just no way down and he comes in and swoops you away. Um, this is Savior. It's when you're certainly going to die. You're absolutely done. You're saying your goodbyes. Um, and at that minute, you're swooped in by a Savior and he saves your life. I think that's why we like all the Marvel movies. I like all the beginning of the Marvel movies when they just swoop in and save somebody. Um, I like that much more than all the crazy uh, stuff that happens at the end of it. But the idea of being saved, that's what Jesus has done for you. He swooped in and saved you. You were on your way to hell. You were absolutely on your way to destruction and death. And, it, it, and, and no matter what you think about that, that's just true. Um, but this Savior jumped in and didn't just sacrifice or risk his life for you. He actually died for you um, to save you. So that's amazing. Jesus is our Christ. He's our Savior. But he's also our Lord. That's the word that goes in front of Jesus. Now, sometimes we think the word Lord is like this divine name. It's actually not a divine name. It actually means just owner of slaves. Um, it means like master. It means like uh, these people are my possessions. Um, now, God and loves us and Jesus treats us like a brother. But the fact is he's our Lord. And you can even see that in the letters from Peter and Paul. Um, they, they call themselves slaves. Uh, and we just need to obey God. We need to let Christ be our Lord. Um, he has our best intentions. When he says go 10 steps forward and 10 steps right, it's because there's a treasure there. It's not just to exasperate us and make us walk by some guidelines that we don't understand. If he has a treasure for us, if we go 10 steps forward and 10 spe steps right, and there's our treasure, but me and you decide to go eight forward and three to the left, and then we're like, Jesus, so where's the treasure? Well, dude, you didn't follow in his footsteps. Obviously, you didn't end up where he did. Um, you didn't, you don't see the treasure. And I believe there's a daily treasure. I believe there's treasures every day Christ wants to give us, but we have to follow in his footsteps. We need to obey Christ to try to be as much like him as you possibly can. That is not a burden. That is a blessing. Uh, be filled with the love he was. Have the mind of Christ. These things are available to us as his children. Amen. <clears throat> So then it says here, in his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Um, great mercy. Praise God for great mercy. Now, a little mercy, great mercy. This mercy covers the deal. It, he totally accepts us. And we've been given a new birth into a new living hope. Let's talk about those two ideas briefly. Um, a new birth. You know, you are a new creation. That's what the Bible teaches. You are not the same creation you were before you became a Christian. You had to become something different in the spiritual world. Your body actually had to become different somehow in the spiritual world. Otherwise, you'd be destroyed. And let me explain that for a second. If in the Old Testament, um, you were hanging out around the temple and you just decided one day you had a good quiet time reading the Torah. And you said, I want to go talk to the Holy Spirit. And you just started walking into the temple. And you walked right back there to the ark, went around the curtain and put your hands on the ark and said, let's chat. You would not have made it there. You would have been struck down. You'd be dead. Um, you, you cannot be in God's presence. You, you cannot, uh, you know, as it was said, if you see my face, you'll die. Uh, you know, our body, we can't handle being in the presence of God. We literally physically, uh, it's not possible. So now here's the mind boggling part. Uh, now in the New Testament, uh, you're not just forgiven of sins, 
Um, God decides to live inside of you. Uh, so he is now in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's adopted you, which means you're now a part of his family, which means you now have the genetic, I don't know, body or whatever, make the spiritual makeup that he has. You have now become a spiritual being. You were dead and you've come alive. Spiritually, you were dead. There was nothing there. Uh, and now you have the Holy Spirit in you. You are a new, you have a new birth. I don't even know how to wrap my brain around that. Um, but somehow, me and you are as pure and as clean as the inner holy of holies was enough to be able to hold the Spirit of God. So, thank you, God. Um, so, if you ever can't think of anything to praise Him about, you can start with that one. Um, we have this new birth, and because of that, we have a living hope, a new hope. And this hope never, ever dies. It never, ever goes away. Um, whether I am sick or healthy, I have this hope. Um, you know, one day I'm going to cross over, right? One day we all pass away. Um, I don't know if that's this year or in 10 years or in 30 years. I don't know if that's going to be because of a virus or cancer or a plane wreck or I don't know what, I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, but I know it's going to happen. And the encouraging thing is because of this new birth, I can have an absolutely undiable living hope when that moment arrives. I get to be with Christ. I will be with Christ for eternity. My father has adopted me. My father has forgiven all of my sins. And it was absolutely not based on my righteousness. It was just based on obedience and having faith in him. And uh, brothers and sisters, I pray that this encourages you because we're all waiting for the resurrection. Uh, we want to be resurrected. This life is this short little window where really all we do is we make a decision where to spend eternity. This is not the game. Uh, this is not the destination. <laughs> this life is not what it's all about. This is a tent. Um, this is camping. This is not the mansion. Uh, this is the flight. This is not the vacation destination. Um, we're longing for that moment. But while we're in the tent and we're in the body and we're on the flight, let's praise him as much as we possibly can. Let's talk about how awesome he is. Because if there's anything this world needs to hear this hour, it's how awesome God is and God's desire to be their father and their savior's desire to be their Lord and the Lord's desire to be their savior and the father's desire to be their God. Uh, these are incredible ideas. We just need to keep sharing about it. Uh, thank you for this time that I got to spend with you. Love you guys a ton. You inspire me. You encourage me. Praise God for all your support, for all the mission work over here. Uh, may God protect you. And I'll just close out this sermon. Uh, you can watch this video of our sister being baptized in Israel. So you can see her walking into the sea. I'm sure hundreds of our brothers and sisters in the first century had this exact view. Um, is, is thousands of people were baptized in the first century. So have a wonderful Sunday. And hopefully I'll be able to come back and spend more time with you.